reading today from the book of Acts, chapter 11, the first 18 verses. So I invite you to turn there in your Bibles and let us pray. Father, as your word is read and proclaimed, we pray that your spirit would move among us and open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of an uncircumcised man and ate with them. Peter began and explained everything to them precisely as it had happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners. And it came down to where I was. And I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, birds of the air. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. And I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up into heaven again. Right then three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter, and he will bring you a message through which you and your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you would baptize with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? And when they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. share some good news with you this morning. Bacon is okay to eat. According to this passage, bacon is okay to eat. You see, God had given a restriction on the dietary uh, menu for the Jews, and pork was on there. But we now, through this vision of Peter, God giving us permission to eat bacon. So bacon, eat it up, eat it up. Now, is that what this text is all about? (laughs) No. No. But it is true. Bacon's off the do not eat list. So so there you go. This passage is more than about food. This passage reveals that Peter has been called on the carpet with the church in Jerusalem for eating and being with Gentiles. Now, this all happened in, in chapter 10 and when we get kind of the Reader's Digest version here, you see up until that time the church had been made up of converted Jews. And they still had this animosity, this uh, keeping apart from Gentiles. Now a Gentile is anyone who wasn't a Jew. So that was pretty much everybody else. And they had the idea that God was only going to work through them. But as we know, God has other, other ideas. So the title of our message today is, Who is our mission field? Who is our mission field? We get the answer to that question. Because if we go back to chapter 10, we find a Roman centurion who was a soldier, a leader, named Cornelius. Cornelius had become a believer in the God of the Bible. And one day, as Peter said, as the text tells us, he was praying. And and. God told him to send to a nearby town for a man named Simon Peter. Have him come to your house. And so he did. The next day we find Peter at this person's house waiting for his lunch to be prepared. He goes up on the rooftop and begins praying. And he gets this vision of this 
thing like a sheet being let down. And in it were all kinds of animals, the, the pure and the impure from God's dietary regulations. And, and so God tells him, get up and eat. But Peter said, Lord, I've never eaten anything impure. But God tells him, do not call what God has made pure, impure. Do not do that. At that moment, at that very moment, there's a knock on the door. God tells Peter, go down and answer the door. I've sent these men to you. So, he goes. He listens. He invites them in. They spend the night. The next day they go to Cornelius' house. And when he gets there, Peter says to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Now here's a good point. Asking questions. I mean, Peter could have launched into some sermon or whatever, but he asked a question first. And so Cornelius told him that Cornelius had been praying to God, and God told him to send for Peter, to bring him there. And so he says, now that you're here, please share a message from God with us. So Peter shares the message of Jesus and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes upon all who are present. Peter baptizes them. They become Christians. Peter then goes to Jerusalem. The church leaders have heard this. They call him in and they ask what happened. Now Luke tells us, Luke's the author of Acts, and he says that they were critical of what Peter had done. Now, you think, well, why of all people was Peter called on the carpet? I mean, he was kind of like the head disciple. He was in the inner circle. Anytime Jesus went away, Peter, James, and John went with him. Peter being called on the carpet. You'd think, well, they wouldn't have any question for Peter. But, but remember, the early church was made up of converted Jews. They still had that mindset. They still had a very narrow view of who was in and who was out. And even after becoming Christians. To top it all off, Cornelius is a Roman. They hated the Romans. They were ruling Israel. Now, I wonder, were they calm and just asked for clarification? Or did they chew Peter out? We really don't know, but the word used is criticized. Some, some will say they contended. So I doubt it was a, a calm discussion. But, but what's going on here? Wouldn't they be glad that others had come to Christ? Wouldn't we? Wouldn't we be, hey, I heard so-and-so became a Christian. That's great. We're happy about that. Why were they critical of what Peter had done? Now we have to remember that when we first became Christians, did we have it all together? No. Do we still have it all together? <laughs> No. Being a Christian is a journey. And, and sometimes we have those thoughts in our minds that aren't quite Christ-like. God needs to work on us. So Peter tells the church leaders in Jerusalem why he went. He said, God told me to go. Verse 12, he says, The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and and us. And it hit them. They realized that, because verse 18 says, when they heard this, they had no further objections. And they praised God, saying, so then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. The message of Jesus is now available for everybody. What we're seeing is the continuing mission of Jesus. We must remember why Jesus came into the world. 1 Timothy 1.15, Paul says, Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Jesus' mission was to save us. Sin had broken the relationship with God. 
Jesus came to save us from that. So then, the risen Jesus, as He was ready to ascend back into heaven after the resurrection, says in Matthew 28, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We call that the Great Commission. It is the mission of the church that we are to go out and reach out to everyone. This is the expectation that Jesus has of the church. Now, notice He did not single out anyone. He says, go into where? All nations. And you know in Greek all means all? All nations. Do not set anybody apart. Do not distinguish. See, Peter realized that truth that day when he had that vision. The church leaders had that truth set into them when Peter told them all about it. And we need to realize that as well. That Jesus died for everyone. Jesus died on the cross so that every person could experience eternal life. To know for certain that God loves you. If you wonder, does God love me? You look at the cross. Why, why would He do that if He didn't love us? The movement of God to welcome people into His kingdom will not be stifled by our misunderstandings. So what does all this look like? What does talking about our mission field look, look like? Well, we must be on the lookout for those times God brings someone here to our church. People show up at church. People do not show up at church without God bringing them. Hey, I think I'll go to church. That's not an original thought. That's, that's God's Spirit speaking to someone. So, you know, we, we call ourselves a family, and, and we are. But we must be sure that we include new people, new people who come our way. Because, you know, it's often hard to become part of a group that's established, isn't it? How do you break into a family? Well, you almost have to marry into it, don't you? <laughs> we need to be intentional about welcoming new people people we haven't seen for a while, people uh, making sure that they're welcome. Please never leave here without speaking intentionally to somebody you don't know very well. Because who do we want to talk to after church is over? We want to talk to the people we know and love. Well, these people who God has brought will be people we know and love. So make sure you talk to at least one or two other people before you leave here today. Then we must be on the lookout for those times God is at work in our lives outside. God has a wonderful way of revealing things like He did. See, Peter wasn't in a church when this vision happened. He was at a friend's house waiting for lunch. And God orchestrated. you see how God did this? God was talking to Cornelius. God was talking to Peter. And he brought the two together. Now Peter had to connect the dots, didn't he? What's that, what's that sheep full of food got to do with these guys? But he got it. Sometimes God's going to act in ways that seem puzzling, strange and mysterious. But he's doing it for a purpose. He is making sure that people come to know his love. And so Peter that day had to connect the dots to make sh the connection between all that was going on. So we need to pray for God to help us connect the dots. Sometimes all of a sudden there's somebody you start noticing. Somebody that happens to be in your little circle and you, well, I never saw them before. And you start seeing them over and over. We had a guy named Larry Rudy that would walk past our house lived over a couple of blocks over there in Shelburne. And we would be out working in the yard and we start striking up a conversation with him. I think he struck up a conversation with Jenny when she was at the corner flower bed. And just, hey, I noticed your flowers. I love flowers. We would start having a conversation with Larry. 
Larry passed away this winter, I think it was. Yeah. Um, anyway, I got a phone call from his daughter. He had written down in a, on a, a piece of paper people to call, and, and he wanted to call us. And I thought, wow, <laughs> just to be friendly to somebody. You don't know, is God bringing that person to your attention for you to pray for them? We have a list of people we pray for every morning, especially those that live right around us and those that kind of come by our house on a frequent basis. Maybe he, maybe he wants you to talk to them, to, to make a connection with them. Whatever it is, God is in the people business, and He wants His church to be in the people business. I mean, after all, we're all people, aren't we? We're all people. And, and we become Christians to love God, to be in heaven with Him someday, but also to reach out. Who, who is our mission field? God wants us to be on the lookout for people. Standing in the checkout line. Maybe it's the cashier who's had a customer who was kind of rude with them. And, and we're, you know, yeah, there's what, 30 some checkout stations at Walmart. How many of them are open? Three? <laughs> Two? One? Yeah. And, and we can get a little testy, can't we? We can get a little impatient. Does, does this cashier need our wrath? No. Just be kind. Who knows? Say a quick prayer for them. Our mission is people. Now, I would say that if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, um, in Acts chapter 10, we, we read these words. Cornelius shared these words, I mean, Peter shared these words with Cornelius. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. God has offered salvation for everybody. God has offered his love for everybody. Jesus didn't die on the cross just for a few select people. He died for everyone. For God so loved the world. The whole world. Is He happy with what we do sometimes? No. But He still loves us. And He's always pursuing us. So if you've not accepted Jesus as your Savior yet, these words are for you. Peter shared them with Cornelius and his family, and the Holy Spirit descended upon them. They accepted the Lord. They were baptized. They were welcomed in to the kingdom. So if you're looking for the missing piece in your life, may I suggest Jesus is that missing piece. He is the one who brings peace to us. Just as, as Cornelius was looking for that missing piece, he, come, he had come to believe in God, and, but he knew there was something else. He knew there was something else. What we discover is no amount of good works, no amount of really trying really, really hard to be good can make us acceptable to God. Nothing. Only Jesus. Only faith in Jesus, trusting Jesus, His death on the cross, His resurrection from the dead, His ascension back to heaven. Only trusting in that can you find any peace at all. We're going to let each other down, aren't we? We, we really can't rely totally on everybody, even our spouses, our children, our parents. But God never lets us down. Never lets us down. Only through relationship with Him can we find peace and have hope of eternal life. So my hope and prayer is that all of us encounter Jesus, that we encounter Him in faith and trust as we live out our lives, that we, that we encounter Him within the fellowship of the church, and that we encounter Him as we share what we found in Him to others. Amen? Let us pray. 
Father, thank you for uh, this message of, of how you love us so much. And, and you have no barriers. You have no restrictions. You want everyone to know you love them and you want to bring them into the kingdom and you want to transform their lives. You don't want to leave them the way they are. You want to change us to become more like Jesus. Think, Father, we, we know this world would be so different if that's the way we were. Thank you. Thank you that Jesus saves. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.